Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things and today I'm gonna make the best lamp ever. Of course, with every great lamp comes great decision making and I needed to decide what Spider-Man I wanted to make. Naturally, being a big brain boy, I went with the greatest Spider-Man of them all, Tobey Maguire. Now you may be saying to yourself, really, Tobey Maguire? And yes, I'm being serious. Deadly serious. First of all, Toby's Peter Parker was a straight up dork. He wasn't a handsome dude pretending to be nerdy, he was a super dork that happened to be a ridiculously jacked superhero. Second, his voiceover narration was the closest thing we can get to comic book thought bubbles and they were just the tits. Finally, Bully McGuire. Anyways, at this point I've got my armature finished and I can get to the posing. The plan here is to have Spidey hanging upside down from a lamppost, so I'll bend the wire into the position I want and start building up the body with clay. I'm going to be going with cosplay for the majority of the body since I anticipate dropping this thing a lot and I want to know that it's not going to be cracking and falling apart. To help with the blending I'll mix a tiny bit of Super Sculpey into the cosplay since I find a roughly 60-40 mix leaves me with a blendable clay that's flexible once baked. And for you longtime viewers, here's a gratuitous shot of me sculpting Spider-Man's superhero ham chops. Otherwise, it's just a case of adding clay and refining musculature until I'm happy with the end result. Because Spidey's in a suit that blends his body into his head, I'll take the time to make his head now so that I can sculpt the rest of his suit in upper body anatomy, knowing that it'll smoothly blend into his head. Fun fact, if you look up north of the border in Google, face reveal is one of the top searches, which seems kind of weird, but to sate those thirsty thirsty searches, I've actually sculpted a perfect likeness of myself underneath Spider-Man's mask. Otherwise, a quick bake and I can attach it to the body. Then I can blend it in and get back to building the muscle. And once everything is finished, I'll smooth any of the sharp edges by rolling my silicone shapers around before dousing Spider-Man in a nice thick layer of isopropyl alcohol. The alcohol works to soften the clay and will help hide any tool marks or fingerprints prior to baking. However, the observant among you may have noticed that he doesn't seem to have any hands, so I'll make some hands out of pure grade A cause clay by cutting a few fingers into a flat ball of clay. This then gets stuck onto his arm stump and I can refine the shape while attached to the body. Now as I said before, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man was always my least favorite. Why? Because his suit doesn't just have a simple woven pattern like the others, instead he's got like this semi-metallic webbing that sits on top. So to help me make it evenly spaced and in the correct location, I'll quickly sketch out where each of the strands will lay before pressing his eyes into place. Then it's time to roll out some ridiculously thin wormy dealies and get to building up his webs. Finally, before adding the final details, I'll give all the webs a fine sanding. This will help bring some of the high spots in line with the rest of the suit and help sharpen up some of the edges. Then I can add his little Spider-Man logo. 
And then before one last bake, I want to add some wrinkles to his suit. It's a pretty form-fitting outfit, but even then there will still be a bit of fabric stretching around his upraised arm and bunching up around his knees. Then he's ready for a quick white primer, which means it's time to get to the painting. Now with Spider-Man finished, I can finally get started on the actual lamp. I'll start by making the big metal pole upon which the lamp and Spider-Man will rest. I'm using a sheet of thick plastic card that I'll mark out at 5mm intervals and then score lightly using my knife. This will allow me to fold the plastic card along the lines and make a nice, uniformly spaced octagonal pole. Each corner of course will have a little gap where it bends in on itself, so I'll fill it using some texture paste. Then once it's dried, I can sand everything flat and I'm left with a nice one part street lamp pole. To make the base for the pole that connects to the sidewalk, I'll use the same plastic card and cut out a small square that I can then mark the shape of the pole onto. Then using a little off-camera mathematics, I've made the four sloped sides that can get glued together at the base of the pole, then any of the gaps can get filled in with a little bit more gap filler. To really make it look like a lamp post, I want to cover it in random metal rings. I'll use some varying thicknesses of masking tape, wrapped around a few times to build it up, and then I'll make a few more pieces using thinner cardstock. I uh, don't actually have any footage of that, because I spent an hour making the pieces, but forgot to press the record button. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more amazing content that I forgot to record. The arm that holds the light is made out of an extra thick straw that I've bent slightly using a heat gun. This gets stuck into a little plastic card that then gets attached to an equally sized hole I've drilled into the lamp post. And because Spider-Man is pretty heavy, I've reinforced the pole with some angled plastic card and I'll use some of these shrink wraps to lock it in place and act as lamp post creepies. Rather than faff about with bending plastic card, I'll make the actual lamp itself with some good old clay. Then a hole gets drilled into the end of it and I can glue it safely and securely onto the tip of my lamp post. The lamp base will be made out of a thick round piece of MDF and I'll use some XPS foam to make the street corner. Once I've measured, marked and cut out the shape of the corner, I can use a ballpoint pen to mark out the curb and individual stones before adding some finely detailed texture. To make the asphalt on the street, I'm going to use a technique I've borrowed from Zero Figure Maker, who made another awesome Spider-Man diorama and used sandpaper as the asphalt. It's as easy as gluing it in place, cutting the edges off, and then you're left with pretty much a ready-to-go miniature street texture. Then I'm ready to add the wiring, so I'll mark out where the lamppost would lie and drill a hole down through the base so I can run my wiring. I like to do this after I've added the sandpaper, since it's really good for my drill bits. I'll be powering the light with this little 3 volt battery pack, so I'll mark out where it'll sit on the underside of the base, and then I can chop out the housing for it. Then a little hot glue will hold my street corner in place, and I can cut off any excess so it lines up with the base. I'll run some wire through the light along the neck, down the base and out the bottom, then attach a thin piece of XES foam to the base to help it stick onto the sidewalk. The hot glue did end up deforming the base of the lamppost, but I think we can just chalk that up to some crazy New Yorker who drove his car into the lamppost and dented it. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. 
And we're finally ready for pole painting, so I'll give the entire surface a quick primer with some white gesso before giving everything a base coating with dark, dark gray. And I'll paint the lamppost with that quintessential lamppost gray that's also kind of blue, so like a battleship gray, I guess. And then I'll paint all the little shiny metal parts with either silver or gunmetal gray. And the curb gets a coat of stonewall gray, and then I can give the entire base a once over with a heavy coating of black wash. I'll then soak up any of the excess using one of these sponges that I found in my partner's makeup bag. I can see why she uses them and why she keeps them hidden away. Finally, to add a little bit of that patented New York grime, I'll splatter a little bit of black wash along the bottom. Then we're on to dry brushing time. I'll give the road a dozen dry brushes with progressively lighter grays before hitting the sidewalk with the same and then hitting the lamppost with that original grayish blue. After all that, I thought my metallic straps were looking a little bit dull, but fortunately on an impulse, I purchased some of these liquid chrome markers that I've yet to find a use for. So, why the hell not? Hello. And with the painting done, it's now safe to add my light. I want it to be nice and bright, so I'm going to go with a warm white LED, which I've also found can be easily stabbed into this wiring without any need for soldering. Now I'd like to think that I've learned a number of useful and niche skills and I'd go so far as to consider myself a man of many talents. I've got double jointed thumbs and I can burp on command, I've got a full head of hair and I can almost speak a single language fluently. What I can't do though is solder worth a damn. Fortunately I found these wonderful little guys that keep my wiring well connected without the need for me to actually learn to do something new. They slip on like your bog standard shrink wrap but with the application of a little fire you've got quick and easy solder connections. Then a quick test to make sure it actually works and I can glue the switch to the inside of the housing. Then while I had the hot glue out, I had a moment, moment of genius, genius and decided to fill the lamp with hot glue. This worked an absolute charm and helps to diffuse the LED while looking like those nasty plastic caps you always see on street lights. Then I'm ready to gussy up the streets by adding some white lines so it's not quite so flat. I'll mark out the lines with some painter's tape, then haphazardly slap on some white paint. I don't actually want perfect coverage here since it'll help give the illusion of worn white lines. Finally, I'll add some of those little random spray paint lines that you always see in cities that I can only assume mark out gas or water lines. Then it's time to make the little odds and ends that will get stuck onto our lamp. I'll start by making some of those green metal mystery boxes that are attached at street level out of the same plastic card that I made the post out of. I'll then paint them that aforementioned green, add some little edge highlights and color variation before giving them a final coat of gloss varnish. Then I can add lots of random graffiti. Now before you look too hard, none of this is anything. It's just random swirls and ugly looking letters. Uh, except an Illuminati sign as a shout out to my last YouTube poll and this Spider-Man tag that ended up looking like a melting lobster. Of course, what's a street corner without a street sign? And I thought it would be kind of cute to add a little north of the border to the build, so I decided that this street would be called North Avenue. And then to help fill a bit more space, I made a one-way sign. Finally, to really sell this as being a New York street corner, I figured the most New York thing I could think of was some random garbage bags. To make some miniature garbage bags, I've got a section out of a real garbage bag, then crumpled it up, folded it in half, and wedged it between two pieces of wood. Then I'll blast the edges with a heat gun, which will cause them to melt into one another, creating a nice sealed edge. Then I'll invert my garbage pocket, stuff it full of bits of garbage, tie it off, and I'm left with a hella cute miniature garbage bag. And of course you can do the same thing with different colors and sizes to get even hella cuter littler bags. And it's finally time for assembling all of my little pieces.
finally, before I hang Spider-Man, I want to increase my SEO tags, so I'm going to add a bit more No Way Home specific graffiti. Then we're finally ready to add Spider-Man, which means I need to make his web, so I'm going to use some fishing line. I'll unravel several strands until I've got the thickness I'm after, then I'll use the soldering hands I bought but never use to hold them in place. Then I'll coat the entire line in UV resin. This will both help strengthen the line and keep Spider-Man on a bit more rigid of a mount, and it'll also allow me to make the spider web a tiny bit more interesting. Then I can affix one end of the web to Spider-Man's hanging hand using some more UV resin, and then the other end gets attached to the top of the lamp post. Then I'll wind a few more strands around the upper portion of the main web before sticking it in place with some more resin. Top tip here, if you're having trouble holding it in place, I find spontaneously growing a third hand really helps out. These extra strands then get cut to length, coated in resin, and attached to the lamp. They'll act as the vertical attachments for the webs and give something for the horizontal webbing to string around. Speaking of which, I'm going to make the rest of my webbing using Fabri-Tac. This is a fabric glue that I've never used on fabric, but use all the time when I need to make slimy or webby looking things. It's super stringy, dries quick, and it's hella fun to use. Otherwise, once that glue has set, we're uh, on to the glamour shots. There you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one, because I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, as a lamp, it's terrible. But as a sculpture, it's rad as hell. So all told, probably a solid B+. But you know it's an A+, those wonderful folk over on Patreon that make this channel possible. So a big shout out to my newest patrons, Olivia Grace, Luke, Nate Meyer, Natalie Lowe, Miklos47, Tybee, Marion, Andrea Jemmy, Rachel Kelly M, and Snark Attack. You are the well-used street lamp that holds the weight of this channel up. If you'd like to help the channel out, then don't forget to subscribe and press all the necessary and relevant buttons and do all the things you're supposed to do at the end of a video. Hell, if you made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.